Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to iTalk Movies here on the Popcorn Talk Network. Today I'm here with the unbelievably talented Masiel Lucia, so don't move a muscle. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's iTalk Movies. Gentlemen. And welcome to iTalk Movies here on the Popcorn Talk Network. I am here with the unbelievably talented Masiel Lucia, and you're listening to Summer by Vivaldi per your request. <laughs> my little caffeine fix. <laughs> yeah, are you a big classical music fan? I actually am, but I anything with a good rhythm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's well, guys, Maciel is incredibly talented. Um, not only is she a classical music fan, but also a poet, philanthropist, actor. <laughs> we'll be talking all about it. But before we do that, let me introduce myself, guys. My name is Jeff Graham. If you want to find me online, you can do so at Jeffrey C. Graham. And of course, I have the beautiful Maciel Lucia here in studio with me. Hi, Jeff. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here, Maciel. <laughs> We're so for, excited. Thank you for having me. Let the fans know where they can find you online if they want to connect with you. So I'm on, I'm basically very active on social media. I am on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. They're all my first names. So, Great. Um, Twitter is Masiela. My Instagram is Masiela Lucia. Perfect. And then Facebook could be either one. <laughs> it, that's an Albanian name, I'm assuming, right? No, actually, it isn't. It's my mom and dad's name merged together. Oh, how cool is that? And I have to admit, it means orphan in Botswana. In oh, Spanish. really? Mm -hmm. And it means more sky in Spanish. Masiela. Oh, my gosh. And the nice thing is there's probably not a lot of Masiela, so you can kind of lay claim to the name, I I'd bet. like to lay claim to the name, although I've heard some people say they've met a few. Have they? So I'm a bit incredulous. I just, yeah, no, I don't know yet. You're the important Masiela. <laughs> we can leave it at that. I feel like you know you've made it when you have a name like Oprah or Madonna, where, like, there's the one. And I feel like with Masiela on Twitter, you're just the one. Well, so. this is a pure accident. My mom named me, so she gets credit. <laughs> nice. Okay, we'll give her the credit. So, see, my name is Jeff Graham, so yeah. there are very, very That's many very of me. That's a very solid name, Jeff. It's a good name, yeah, but Jeff there Graham. are many Jeff Grahams. If you Google search Chef Graham, you get a very large and shaped African American football player. Oh, really? So, not me, but that's uh -huh. totally fine. <laughs> uh, Masiel, I'm so happy to have you here in studio today. Thank Thanks you. so much for being here. Thank we have a lot to talk about. Um, basically, as I mentioned at the top, you're an actress and a writer and a philanthropist. So, I think I kind of want to segment our talk that way. Ooh, where do we go? Where do we start? I know, but I want to start by talking about your acting career because, of course, you're here to promote the new Sharknado movie, which I we're am. so excited. Let me just Sharknado 5 Global Swarming. Yes. Is that correct? Make America Bait Again. <laughs> Make America Bait Again. Again. So I love the Sharknado franchise. Yeah. I consider myself like kind of a movie snob, and I love the Sharknado franchise. Can you kind of talk about how that franchise has managed to capture people who love these kind of guilty pleasure B movies, but also these kind of, you know, high-ended, high-nosed film critics who want to engage in something really, really fun? Yeah, I mean, it is a guilty pleasure, like you mentioned. Absolutely. Jeff. It is, and it's like, it doesn't take itself seriously. But as actors, we take the project seriously because mm -hmm. what's written in there between the lines is a lot of heart and a lot of family. Yeah. So I think the audience can appreciate that little potent mix of just fun and heart. Absolutely. And it's, yeah, yeah it's such a fun escape. And I think this is a great example of just like, zoning in on a specific yes. tone and like really it's a lot of movies when they don't know how to approach a project tonally they yeah. kind of get lost exactly. and this movie knows exactly what it is it's, and they're they such a blast it. it's their own tone they're like you know what we're unapologetic about what we want to do yeah we want sharks with tornadoes i don't know if maybe the meeting of sci-fi was like what works with the demographic they love tornadoes and they love sharks <laughs> I, mean, I don't know but it's pretty brilliant yeah and um you know it, it's a movement at this point it is a what's it been like <laughs> for you to enter the sharknado cult it came out of nowhere it came like a whirlwind yeah <laughs> so, like, a, like a tornado like a, like a shark nato <laughs> i was planning to go to florence italy and um within 48 hours that was my scheduled flight i got a call saying you have an offer for shark nato nice initially and, uh, i wanted to say no uh -huh. i love the shark nato franchise but i thought this is completely outside the scope of my genres that i've done and i have a florence italy trip that i'd like to go with my husband we've had everything planned for months so I initially wanted to say no. I said, let me just read the script, though. I just want to take a look at what they're filming now. Of course. I fell in love with it. Yeah? That was it. I'm like, okay, okay, I'll do this. Um, I love the fact that Gemini, my character, had so much heart. Mm -hmm. And she was a feminist, and she was strong and unapologetic about her strength. And yet she was so much compassion. I said, I need to dive deeper into this. Well, speaking of the badassness that yes. you just mentioned, <laughs> um, Gemini is incredibly badass. So I want to go ahead and throw to, you do all of your own stunts, of which I want to talk I do about. My own we actually have a video. It's all queued up. This is your character, Gemini. And I, you doing it yourself, kicking a shark in the face. Back up, you want to go ahead and play that for our fans. Here we go. It's getting all perfect. Here we go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> 
Would you believe if I told you that was totally spur of the moment? Really? Yeah, the director, we were just kind of playing around in that field, and uh -huh. he said, okay, what can you do? I said, I can do a high kick. Nice. I'm like, can I have five minutes to stretch? He's like, no, we don't have time. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I'll do That's it. That's what you have. <laughs> um, let's talk about production. What is it like? How's the production schedule? Where are you shooting? What's it like doing well, your own stunts on a movie like this? Well, every Sharknado is a bit different. I'd say this one is bigger than ever, and not just in the context of, you know, now it's global, but the fact that we filmed in so many different countries. Mm -hmm. Sharknado 4, I mean, we were pretty much th across America, but really we only filmed in two locations. Mm -hmm. Imagine filming in five or six like international locations. Wow. Yeah, so it became very cinematic, and I think the effect of it looks cinematic. It looks like Indiana Jones. Cool. Yeah, so I'm really excited. It feels like this high-budget film, and it has a new vibe to it, and I hope they maintain that. Well, yeah, with each movie, you guys are, <laughs> like, soon you'll be in theaters. I mean, like, these movies are getting such attraction. Yes. You'll be on the moon for this sixth one, Oh, yeah, we've been on the moon. Now it's, uh, maybe we'll play with physics a bit. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, they're so much fun, and I just have to imagine you're so excited about this one. Yes. What can you tell us kind of plot-wise about this one? Oh, my gosh, what can I not say? I'll be skinned alive by the producers if I reveal anything. <laughs> I'm sure, but yeah. But I can tell you that I filmed in London. Very and exciting. There's some really incredible cast um, that originated from London that we have cameos from. Okay, so very exciting. exciting. And uh, I can tell you that the Sharknado takes on this new entity that we've never even fathomed. Uh huh. Very cool. That's all I can say. <laughs> so we've had Tara Reid in studio. She's yes. wonderful. She's we love adorable. Tara. I love her. It's got to be fun because you probably kind of grew up knowing who Tara was. Of course. What's it like having her co-star friend now? She's a friend. Yeah. And um, you know that's one of the things I really appreciated about entering the cast of Sharknado is everybody was incredibly warm. Cool. It literally felt like a group hug as soon as I walked on set. I mean, I was a bit tentative. I'm like, I'm the new girl. Hi guys. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Um, but Tara was, I mean, I have such a soft spot for her. I simply, simply adore her. Good. Yeah, yeah. she's wonderful. She, we've had her in studio. Really good she's heart. She's really yeah. classy, great woman. I love her. Um, so I kind of want to know what it's been like, again, just like entering the world of Sharknado. Like, I'd have to imagine the fans are bananas. <laughs> like, I'd kind of love to just hear about that experience. You know, I, I have to say, the George Lopez fans and the Sharknado fans, they don't necessarily overlap. But I've seen. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure there are plenty, but... Um, I'm one of them, just yes, so you guys okay. know. So, yeah. You're the first one I've There's met. one, at least. <laughs> you know, they're very distinctly George Lopez and Sharknado, and I'd say the Sharknado fans are... I mean, they're all about cosplay. They're they're just about like these sleepovers. They turn it into an event for mm -hmm. them, and it becomes like a week's worth like leading up to the Sharknado experience. And you just I love the fact that Sharknado makes it possible to immediately contact the fans one on one and have this conversation with them about why they love the movie. Yeah, that's what makes it worth it for an actress. And I'm an sure. Actor. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, we're so excited for the new Sharknado. When is it premiering? Just so we can be aware. Uh, this Sunday. This Sunday. Just so you August guys all 6th. know, August 6th, new Sharknado, Sunday on Sci Fi. Why would you miss it? Why? It's going to be the best thing on it's TV that night. It's Sunday a Sunday. Night. <laughs> Um, it's the only thing I'll miss Game of Thrones for is the new oh, Sharknado. Oh, don't so. remind me. I'm going to miss it, too. That's all right. But it's Sharknado. It's worth you it. You have to miss it. <laughs> um, well, we're so excited, guys. So the new Sharknado, I'll throw back to it at the end again, but it's going to be Sunday, this upcoming Sunday, August 6th. So don't miss it on Sci-Fi. Yes. Uh, but of course, Sharknado's not the only project you've worked on as an actor. You just mentioned George Lopez, which you're very, very busy, but that's another very notable role for you. Yes. So I'd love to talk about your experience on the George Lopez show. How was that? So George Lopez show, I was green in the industry. Mm -hmm. I just arrived and it was my very first sitcom audition it was my very first network test I had no idea what to expect mm -hmm. I remember reading the sides for that and the role the breakdown of Carmen and basically they described her as she is wise but naive she is courageous but insecure she is confident but weak mm -hmm. I'm just like all right they want a real girl like at this point I can't be all of that in two scenes <laughs> right so I was just so authentically me and I think the fact that I had no idea what to expect in a sitcom world I didn't have these pretenses I think helped me get the part. Absolutely, and they I feel like they kind of use some of who you are in the character of Carmen, because yeah. we'll get to it later in the interview, but you are also a poet. And they kind of incorporated sort of that, I don't want to say angsty, but yes. kind of <laughs> element, you know, emotional, poet. in touch with your feelings. Yes. I feel like they really incorporated that into the character. They did, and you know, I had the luxury of working with these incredible writers for five years, so they saw me grow up. And I remember there were a few times where I was like pouring out my heart and soul about a breakup I just had. And then two weeks later, it showed up on, on the script. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> there it is. Now I have to act this out <laughs> on national television with a pimple here because I'm a teenager. Right. Um, no, but it was, it, it's great to have the character mold with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And 
multicam people love what's what has been the difference between a multicam shoot and sort of the single cam cinematic world you've sort of yeah. entered and for our fans who are listening i'll explain quickly a multicam show is sort of your conventional um, sitcom experience so if you think of friends seinfeld george lopez it's on a stage and kind yes. of a theatrical presentation and you have an audience who's watching along yes. so i'd love to hear about some of the differences between growing up on a multicam show and then now moving into this cinematic experience oh absolutely so multicam feels like you're in a dollhouse mm -hmm. because you don't have the fourth wall so everything is just kind of presented you have the kitchen here the bedroom here the office here that turns into a factory the next week um, so the audience gets to see everything like a spectacle and you're walking from set to set and it's really a stage mm -hmm. and to hear the audience real time I mean at some point as an actor you learn how to parse the, the, the humor and the, the laughter like you can break it up or you can stretch it longer because you hear it you can immediately react with the audience which right. is what I love to do um, with cinematic experiences like even Sharknado it's like you're fully immersed in production where you're in a house you're in the woods you're in a, in a totally different country and you don't have that much time to build the character, so you have to have it built completely before you even step on mm -hmm. set. And with sitcom, as, as you know, Jeff, I've been acting it on for five years. So for me, I mean, I was able to slowly build Carmen to find who she was and all the nuances and color in her. I bet, and that's what's interesting with a film, is I bet you guys shot out of order, is that right? With... Oh, yeah. So you have to be able to track the character's arc depending on what scene you're shooting and be aware of all that as you go well, on Well, I can set. give you a little secret about Sharknado, uh -huh. Sharknado 4. Uh, we didn't really know who Gemini was even halfway through filming. Interesting. So a lot of the choices you were making <laughs> were really writing. Were on the spot. Cool. That's. Yeah. I mean, that makes it really special because you kind of have ownership over that character. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, basically, they introduced her as the babysitter that would go to Vegas with uh, Ian, but without his family. Uh huh. With his character, and they're like, "Why would the babysitter without the family go to Vegas <laughs> with the father? That's a bit weird." And then, and with a crop top. I mean, that's odd. <laughs> so then they said, "Let's make her the family friend." Pretty nice. innocuous. Nope. Still kind of weird. <laughs> Why would? So eventually, she was the first cousin. Nice. I love it. Very fun. Well, that's. I think that's the fun thing about film production is it is kind of on the fly. Yes. You know. Some of those decisions do happen last minute. Yeah. So, um, the thing that I've been amazed about is I was looking through your oeuvre of movies, and you have all these multi. That's a beautiful word, by the way. Oh, thank you very what much. Is it again? Oeuvre. oeuvre, like I've it's never like heard that before. that'd be like your um, palette or like your. I love it. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a useful okay. one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and you have um, all these multilingual projects. Yes. You speak four languages. I do. That's I feel why like I, love I barely words. speak English, but I guess same, I did just same. use the word oeuvre. So that's actually quite incredible. You um, just just taught an English major another word. Right, there you go. I love it. <laughs> um, I speak four languages, and it was out of necessity. I lived in these four different countries. English was my fourth. Um, the teachers didn't know what to do with me when I first arrived because <laughs> at this point, my mind was just boggled with all these different languages. And unfortunately for me, I came from learning German the most recently, so English and German are actually quite similar. Mm -hmm. But when you're so young and you're confused with all these different languages and sounds, it's really hard to parse out the difference. Right. So they couldn't pull it out of me. Um, but eventually I had one teacher, Mrs. Presta, sixth grade, and she just she read my poetry and she said, you're incredible, read it in front of the class. That was the one uh, encouragement I needed, and since then I just but became passionate about the English language. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's a great transition. Let's go ahead and talk about your poetry. <laughs> sure. I'm like so astounded by what a multi-hyphenate you are. <laughs> and it's so refreshing because there's a lot of actresses, and I'll say beautiful actresses, who don't necessarily have the intellect to support their, their craft and actually have a respect for, you know, building language and... I just think it's very, very cool that you've written five collections of poetry. Jeff, I'd love to take credit for that, but I would have to say um, these actresses that you know haven't explored these other crafts is because they're de totally dedicated to one. Yeah, and I'm that's sure fair. if they took the opportunity, they would, because yeah. I'm not anything exceptional, trust me on that. But um, I can tell you one thing. Um, to me, I needed the avenue of poetry because I needed to escape. Mm. And this is my way of escaping the industry. I couldn't just completely live in that world. Right. It was a complete bubble for me, especially at such a young age. So the only way I could find a different voice outside of my character, Carmen, was writing. Well, what's so impressive is that you're not just writing poetry, you're writing like award-winning poetry. Like, it's actually like, this is respected work that <laughs> you're you so making. Much. Thank you. Um, so I want to talk about the newest poetry project you're working on right now. It's called The Living Air. Yes. And there's like a translation Mother Teresa connection. I want to hear all about this. This is so interesting. So, where do, okay, so every single book that I write, similar to my acting, is I always want to push the genres. I've always wanted to explore something brand new. Mm -hmm. So I did voiceover, I did sitcom, I did drama, I did period pieces. I did foreign film, basically covered it, drama, one hour drama for TV. Um, so with this particular book, I said, I've written four or five books. I don't remember now because I just keep writing. I can't stop. Right. But I've written enough books where I wanted to see 
how come in all these years I've never explored a different language? I can mm -hmm. speak it. Right. <laughs> Why can't I write it? So then I, I thought to myself, let me just try it once, see if I could come up with something. I wrote three poems in German. I translated it back to English, which I found harder than actually writing it in German. Hmm. Which, because the nuances of languages, figures of speech don't actually match Especially up in poetry, because exactly. it's such a condensed medium, such exactly. a condensed form. You don't have a lot of space to really elaborate. And then I thought, I love Mother Teresa. She's Albanian. I can resonate with the fact that she left when she was 15 years old to pursue her vocation. But by 12, she already knew what she wanted to do. Same by 12 years old. So I researched her. And to me, translating her poems into English felt like an acting session because I had to read her work. I had to read her personal letters to her friends and family to really understand the interior of her world. Hmm. So I had to read these books, like tomes of like collections of her letters. And finally, I was able to kind of get a glimpse of who this incredible human being was. And um, I started writing. Again, it was time consuming but it was absolutely rewarding personally. Mm -hmm, I bet. Because I love her, and she's one of the most She's dynamic. one of the best. I mean, like, I think when you look back at, like, the 20th century, and yes. you think about the greats, you think of MLK, you th and you think of Mother Teresa, you know? Like, she's... And she's not one-dimensional. She, she is a contradictory person. Mm -hmm. She is a dynamite. So are you going to play her in a movie <laughs> one day? I would love to produce a film, and if I'm lucky enough to, to act to portray her in one of her times. Um, absolutely. I, I just know her her heart and soul based on what I read, and I love her. Yeah, so just to be clear, the, the collection is your interpretation of her work? Or? No, I try to be as literal as possible. Cool. But I needed to understand her interior in order to do so. Right, absolutely. So, but I really tried to be as very specific. So I didn't, I didn't play around. I didn't take liberties with her words. But sometimes when you're translating, you have to make decisions, you right? You have to make decisions. So how would you kind of process those as you're like making decisions? Because you're translating Albanian into English, is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes. Um, you know, thankfully, her poetry were felt more like meditations, so they didn't have a lot of figures of speech. It was more very specific mm -hmm. uh, requirements and, and expectations she had for herself and for God. Um, so it was very easy to find the parallel word for the most part. Um, I didn't really stumble upon any figures of speech issues. I did it with my poetry. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how do I say this in English when I, when I wrote in German? I don't know. Right. Like, There's no definition for this. Um, but thankfully, she was much more direct mm -hmm. with her language. Cool. Well, that's so cool. I just <laughs> love how you're such a multi-hyphenate. It's inspiring to those of us who are, you know, trying to build kind of a multifaceted career. I just think, you know, you kind of just have to say yes and yes. do it, you know? You have to try. Yeah, you have to try. Um, so how would you describe your poetry? My poetry is far more elaborate, mm -hmm. and um, there are times where it's, I, I, I tend to, I have this weird parallel of my personality. I am very open, mm -hmm. very transparent, but at the same time, I'm incredibly guarded mm -hmm. because of my industry and where I grew up and, and all the experiences I've had. I had no choice but to as part of my um, safety. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I, I write, it's like this tension, this like this rubber band that gets keeps getting pulled. I want to be transparent about what I write because that's what I intend to do. But then I feel uncomfortable because mm -hmm. it feels like little diary entries. So, right. so all my books, they're literally diary entries, and they follow my life from fi from 12 years old up until 30. Uh huh. So uh, why did you decide to publish them? I, I'm sure that's scary as someone who's kind of bleeding on the page to put it out there. Exactly. I because I was approached uh -huh. and they said you know these these are great poems and you should just pursue it and I said all right I mean if this could heal or help anyone because in the end I don't want to release a book or a poem or any kind of career path acting wise unless it heals to some degree mm. and you know people may say well then why did you do Sharknado because Sharknado heals right there absolutely. is a heart to it and I wouldn't do a project if I feel it demotes society in some way um, because I think there's enough of that. Right. And if I can contribute positively, sure. I mean, if this helps anybody, absolutely. Good for you. And I, I feel that way about the Sharknado franchises. It's like a cure for depression. It do, it's do you know perfect. What I mean? It's an escape. It's absolutely an escape. So that's really that's really neat. Have you been approached about projects that you have turned down? Because oh, yeah. You, yeah. To the, to the disappointment of my, my representation, yes. <laughs> Plenty of time. Um, they know how specific I am. Absolutely, um, because I can't live with myself after the fact. Right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's so easy to make those decisions in the moment, but you do have to realize that the choices you make are career-long choices. Exactly. So. Very cool. I respect that a lot for your <laughs> listeners. I think that's a really good advice for them to kind of, you know, think, think the long game goals, yeah, exactly. you know. Um, so you do have a poem that your PR sent to me. I don't know if you'd want to read it on air or not. I would love to. You know, I've great. never read this on air. Okay, great. I'd okay. love to be the first platform to okay. let you do that. I didn't so. even rehearse this. This just came out. That'll of be good. It'll be more raw that way. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Should I do it with like the drama of like rehearsal? Absolutely. Okay. Let me recite this. Okay. Yeah. Poets, 
<laughs> I love it. We stalk the truth as poets, sensualists, a duality limited in sanity. We labor in our muse, carving alphabets of experience into our hearts. Bound in primal longings, we pine to be understood by ourselves. As poets, our lamentations are glorious, filled with the virtues angels would learn to envy. We fall in love forever many times, and many times we die. I love it. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love that. I mean, it's a very, that's the artist's journey, right? It yes. Is, yeah. It's, um, so who are some of your poets that really inspire you? Would you oh, say? gosh, where do I even begin? Um, I have shades of like Whitman. In oh, that. I love, yes, exactly. Yeah. I've studied a lot of Whitman when I started building my collection. Um, I love Yosef Kumanyaka. Okay, great. And he's an American, but he's an incredible poet because he's very electric mm. and very unapologetic and very short and curt with his uh, lines. And they're just stunning. Like they're just beautiful in their bareness. Cool. I love him. I love Mother Teresa's poetry. Again, very direct. Yeah. So mine tends not to be as direct, mm -hmm. but um, the poets that I absolutely adore are very specific. And I think that's the beauty of poetry. Yeah. Is to find the specific value in something completely framed in nature, something very real and literal, and uh -huh. turn it into something poetic. Cool. Awesome. Well, I was an English major, so oh, I'll good. have to check out. <laughs> High five. Yeah. Yusef. Komanyaka. Komanyaka. I'll check him out. Yes. Um, so you spoke about kind of, you know, how your personal life does affect the choices you make in your career. Yes. And I'm so interested in your personal life as well. I'd love, and I think your fans would be interested to hear some of, you know, some of your more personal experiences. Oh, we're going to go there. <laughs> Nothing to, this isn't a gotcha interview, but yeah. I want to talk first about your philanthropy because yeah. that's obviously closely linked to, you know, you. And The Uncommon Good is the name of this yes. charity. Is that correct? I'd love to hear more about this. Absolutely. It's, it's my passion right now. It's, um, what we do in Uncommon Good is we elevate the entire family unit. So we teach them about nutrition as a unit, as a family, uh, education, um, opportunities for employment for the parents. And then we take the children and we mentor them. And in that socioeconomic class, there's only a 41.5% success rate of sending these kids off to college. Wow. That's it, less than half go to college. And we mentor these kids and we have a perfect 100%. Wow, yes. congratulations. Thank you. So are you hands-on and... That's why I love it, because I get to mentor the kids, um, you know, personally and see them and meet them and hear their stories. They all have a unique story. And I told myself, because for a while I've been involved with philanthropy my whole life, mm -hmm. since I was about 12 years old. There was something quite unfulfilling about it and I couldn't place why. And then one day I worked on Centibali. I was brought in to be the ambassador for a charity called Centibali, which um, is dedicated to children in South Africa and Lesotho. And this one cause allowed me to meet the children one on one, play with them, learn their songs, hear them singing in the morning, waking us up out in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And it was an experience that stayed with me because I realized that is what was missing. I was always on, you know, on the stage, waving hi, right. supporting the cause, mentioning the name, but I was never there huh. um, in the battlefield in that sense. And meeting the children, I said, this is what I absolutely need to do from now on. So every single cause I've been in involved with since then has been completely dedicated to being in the forefront and being a part of their experience wow. with them. That's I really can't cool. do it otherwise. I won't do it otherwise. Well, I think it's true. It can be hard, you know, when you hear about charity causes or philanthropy causes and you're not on the battlefield, like you said, it can be hard to kind of visualize and really empathize with the experience. Yes. So I think it's the, the hands-on experience of charities. I think one of the most important things that people can do to, you know, just increase their awareness and understanding of the world, it's you know? It's incredible. It's a big world we live in, as you know, because you grew up in a very multicultural environment. Yes. But to really understand it, we have to be in it. So Exactly. And I, I feel like these children that I've met, they've taught me as much as I hope I had taught them. Cool. That's Hearing that stuff is just really meaningful. Yes. So um, another thing I'm interested in, you got married three years ago. I did. So we're past the honeymoon phase. As, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, most busy actresses your age aren't married, and I'm in a similar position because I just got engaged. Congratulations. And thank you very much. And so I was talking about this with my fiance. Do you feel like there's kind of a, um, I don't want to say ageist approach to marriage in Hollywood, but do you feel like you faced any kind of raised eyebrows having gotten married? Yes. It's an interesting, I, we've noticed that too, and we actually had discussions, is this a smart career move for us to get right. engaged? Right, right. I think you're absolutely right, Jeff, because it feels like this industry is built on constant progression and constant free flow and, and you know, to be bound to any, any uh, routine in life. 
they're kind of they're raising an eyebrow because mm-hmm. what if you have to travel to Asia for three months? What are you going to do? Right. You're building a family now. Um, in the end, you, there's no perfect time anyway, whether you're in the industry or not. Right. And you just have to pursue it and make it work. Mm-hmm. And we were able to make it work um, because I was able to have dual realities where I'm completely open in the industry. I'm fluid. I understand that I need to be somewhere right now at this in this country. But at the same time, I know that if I'm not, I'm at home making dinner for my husband who's coming right. home as well. So building that routine. Um, surprisingly, he's not in the industry. But he actually is very understanding and supportive and appreciative of what I know about the industry. So he doesn't impart his logic or his wisdom. He lets me do whatever. Right. He knows this is my field, and I know his field is his that I cannot articulate. <laughs> well, and I'm sure it's fun for him to, like, go to premieres. <laughs> he loves and, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's challenges dating someone who's in the industry, but there's also huge benefits. There are a lot of perks. There's it's a lot of perks. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So um, I think in, in any marriage, there's a trade off. You there's know, it's give and trade-off. take and it's compromise. And, and you're learning a different language. In yeah. A sense. You know, you guys are learning each other's languages. And absolutely. I'm telling you, it'll get easier. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, they always say the first year is the hardest, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, congratulations. And I think it's neat. I think a lot of. Um, actors, producers, writers are wary of marriage young just because the industry can, I think, be a little condescending about that decision. Exactly. But They're it's... just afraid that you'll, you'll be locked down or right. you'll be taken out of the industry. But in a perfect world, you know, your partnership actually makes both of you stronger. Exactly. So. Cool. I, I applaud you and I thank you for kind of sharing about of that because I think it's, a, it's an interesting perspective that's not often shared. You're on to an amazing journey. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks for, you. <laughs> thanks for bringing it back to me. That's yeah. nice of you. Um, so another question I have is, what's your favorite movie that you've seen this year? Okay. And I'm just, because I always love hearing about, I just saw The Big mm. Sick. I don't know if you've gotten a chance to catch I that, yet. that yet. Oh, it was so good. Was it? Yeah, okay. I recommend it. Okay. Um, Baby Driver. Was great. It was amazing. <laughs> I loved it. It was so well edited. It was yeah, so well edited. Definitely. Um, the acting was incredible. Uh-huh. So it was one of those films, like, I stepped out of it and I just said, wow. Yeah. I had to think about it for a few more hours. Um, yeah, I just... There's so many. There's I mean, so many. I just can't. I can't even anymore. Like, I, all I do is go to the movies, so I can't even parse them out anymore. I know. It's because sometimes hard when it's your industry, you have trouble keeping track of like, okay, is that my project? Or there's just so yeah. much. And the, any TV shows that you recently binged that oh, you all, think? All the time. Yeah. Ozark. People are loving that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but I love Jason Bateman. So Jason I'm like, Jason Bateman's incredible. Well, I mean, I've only seen him in comedy, yeah. and he's so great in comedy roles. But this is like a very serious role, yes. is what I've heard. So um, Game of Thrones, obviously, yeah. we binge watched that. Um, Big Little Lies. I just watched, watched Big Little Lies. <laughs> yes, recently too. Man, as an I, you're an actor. Yeah. As an acting exercise, that show was so rich with performances. It I was know, so much I, fun to watch. I believe Reese Witherspoon was pregnant during production. I think that's true. Right? Yeah. Couldn't Which may, maybe helped her tap into. Her her emotions a little yeah, bit. I think but. it did. She <laughs> mentioned she had an emotional <laughs> reason. Nice. Um, well, anything else? What else? I mean, obviously, you just published The Living Air, yes. which is your translation of Mother Teresa's poetry. Yes. I can't wait to check that out. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Sharknado premieres this Sunday. Yes. The world will change forever. Yes. And it's going to be, I mean, like, as was happened with Sharknado 4, all of social media will explode yes. when that movie comes out. So do you feel like you're, like, emotionally prepared no, for Sunday? Um, no, never. never are, well, are you going to go anywhere to watch it or do no, anything? No, we're going to, we're doing the premiere in Vegas. Oh, that's so fun. So the whole cast will be together and we'll, we'll live tweet with the fans. Oh, that's awesome. And I awesome. just need my safety blanket to wrap over my head. Do you get anxious with all the... Yes, because it's unfiltered. You <laughs> yeah. Know? I didn't ask for this. <laughs> right. It's a part of the gig. Yes, but um, yeah. no, because they love the show so much. There's such a good spirit about it. It's right. fun. Too. It's a warm energy it is, probably. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else? So those are the two big projects that we're so excited for. What else should we be looking out for? So uh, we're doing an international release of Forgotten Evil. Oh, which cool. Which is a film I actually did with the producers of Sharknado and the director, Anthony of Sharknado. Nice. Totally different genre, though. Uh, made for Lifetime, and now it's international. But with this particular film, I mean, again, it was a new genre I haven't explored because even though I've done horror and thrillers and, uh, and dramas, this particular experience was I wasn't allowed to have a backstory as an actress. Wow. The character, because my character Renee slash Jane Doe, she wakes up from from a coma, Ooh. and she has amnesia, has absolutely no reflection of who she was, who her friends are, no connection. So basically, waking up with the audience and kind of exploring with them the new experiences of her life. That must have been interesting as an actor because it probably forced you to have to be so present in so the present scene. So present and no safety net. You can't rely on any. None. What's that movie called? Forgotten Evil. The Forgotten Evil. I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Kind of Memento a little bit. Um, 
a bit, yeah, actually, yeah. Shades of? Okay, cool. I think cool. Anthony would appreciate that. Nice. Oh, I mean, Memento's great. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. This is the horror version of Memento. That's yes. how we'll pitch it. Yes. Um, and then I saw a movie called Branded coming out. Is that so right? So Branded was a while ago. Um, again, one of those those projects where cinematically you're in a totally different world. Mm-hmm. Um, for Branded, it was a post-apocalyptic world, um, a dystopia, where we're in the mountains, in the snow, real time, I think in I- Ohio. Okay. No. Colorado. Nice. <laughs> we were in Colorado, I think. Nevada, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Somewhere in the <laughs> somewhere United in States. The world. Um, but yeah, so again, we were completely, we didn't even have Wi-Fi for, wow. three, for three weeks while we were filming. Nice. But it was amazing. Cool. Well, um, we can't wait. I'm excited for you to produce and star in the Mother Teresa biopic. <laughs> no, you reminded me again. No, it's going to be great. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there when it premieres. Um, and of course, guys, just one more time, Sharknado premieres this Sunday. It's true. If you miss out on this movie, you're kind of missing out on a cultural revolution. Yeah. So tune into Sci-Fi on Sunday night if you want to feel like you're connected with the world because everyone's going to be watching this yes. movie on Sunday. Yes, definitely. And this has been so much fun. I love it. Yeah, this absolutely. Um, let the fans know where they can find you online just one more time if they want to connect. Sure. It's um, Masiela, my first name for Twitter, and Masiela Lucia, my full name for Instagram and Facebook. And guys, my name is Jeff Graham. If you want to find me online, you can do so at Jeffrey C. Graham. Um, tomorrow at 9 a.m., I produce a table read show where we bring on actors and writers and table read unproduced scripts. We're reading a horror thriller feature tomorrow called The Drowning Pool, so That's don't amazing. miss it. It's very fun. If you ever want to come on the show, That's awesome. yeah, I mean, we're always <laughs> looking for actors, so um, cool. I'll talk to your PR if you want to come yeah. on the show. Uh, but yeah, that's tomorrow at 9 a.m., guys. And of course, one more time, Sharknado this Sunday. Um, guys, this has been I Talk Movies here on the Popcorn Talk Network. Today we had Masiela Lucia in studio, wonderful Yay. conversation. <laughs> we do this um, series a lot, so come in, get uh, inside with a lot of today's best actors and I guess writers in some cases. <laughs> and um, we're here often, so tune in, follow us on social media, and stay, uh, stay tuned. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.